So I'm 35 years old, and I'm trying to figure out most days what being a man means. I don't drink, I don't fight, I don't love, but these days I find myself wanting to do all three. And I don't really have a favorite color anymore, but I did when I was a kid, and back then, that color was blue. And back then, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to be an astronaut, an architect, an artist, a secret agent, a ranger for the World Wildlife Fund, and a hobo. <laughs> and when I was six years old, I used to always throw my clothes in my blue and yellow plastic and vinyl Hot Wheels car-carrying suitcase and run away to beneath the dining room table. I've made out with more girls than I wish that I've had, and not nearly as many as I would like to. I've been in love three or four times, so I doubt I'm going to try that much more often. And I spend most days making pictures or thinking about making pictures. And I dream too much, and I don't write enough, and I try to find God everywhere. I'm trying to figure out this thing made called a man. And the television tells me that it's bare-knuckled bombing. And that being a man means driving a tank, being a movie star. But my pops does neither of those. He puts the garbage out twice a week. He drives 45 minutes to water flowers. I'm sitting on the bus when a seven-year-old boy carrying a book of Robin Hood, he sits down next to me and he asks me my name. Anise, that's a nice name. Thank you. What's yours? Quentin. Anise, do you want to read with me? So tell me what my fists keep writing. My fingers open up like gates when I type and the wind is swinging in the wake. I lift bridges with poems and forests grow in my mother's eyes. I'm looking for God, Quentin, while this world tries to forget you for trying. For this world, Quentin, it hates your eyes, for they are small and they are pure. And Quentin, this world hates your fingers, little like the stems of flowers, for not being able to pick up the things that you've left behind just because you are still learning to do so. I don't drink, fight, or love, but these days, Quentin, it's only two out of those three that I don't do, and I've fallen in love six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, Quentin, so I don't want to want to, but I still do, and I want to find God in the morning and in the tired hands of dusk at the mouth of the river and down by its feet, but instead I drive 60 through residential streets praying to hit a child, that he may stay forever full of night and life and simple outstretched limbs, trying to pick up way too much, way too fast, forgetting what it means to be a person in a world where egos are measured with tablets where automobiles double from morals, where beliefs are like naps, you leave them behind when somebody touches you, and in a place where oil always seems to take precedence over life, I find myself sitting on a bus watching a small boy tumble down like fresh water, carrying a book that I used to, asking if I want to see what he sees if only for a little while and I do, and then asks if I want to give to him what I see if only for a little while and I read to him. And then says to me, he's going to show me the world, and starts reading me the sentences himself, his hands dancing back and forth across the pages, stumbling over words, skipping whole lines, because his fingers are moving fast and what they're showing his eyes. I want to tell him, slow down, Quentin. Slow down. You don't have to touch and go. You can see it all if your finger whispers on one word. Slow down and hold what you see just a little while longer. For in a world full of fast, fast faces, I'm looking for God everywhere, trying to figure out a little better this little thing he made called a man. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. This is my last poem. This is for the fat girls. This is for the little brothers. This is for the schoolyard wimps and for the childhood bullies that tormented them. For the former prom queens and for the milk crate ball players. For the nighttime cereal eaters and for the retired elderly Walmart store front door greeters. <laughs> Shake the dust. This is for the benches and the people sitting upon them. For the bus drivers driving a million broken hymns, for the men who have to hold down three jobs simply to hold up their children, for the nighttime schoolers, and for the midnight bike riders trying to fly. Shake the dust. This is for the two-year-olds who cannot be understood because they speak half English and half God. Shake the dust. For the boys with the beautiful, beautiful sisters. Shake the dust. For the girls with the brothers who are going crazy 
the ones who are going out of their minds, for the gym class wallflowers, and the 12 year olds afraid of taking public showers, for the kid who's always late to class because he forgets the combination to his lockers, for the girl who loves somebody else, shake the dust. This is for the hard men who want love but know that it won't come, for the ones who are forgotten, the ones the amendments do not stand up for, for the ones who are told, speak only when you are spoken to, and then are never spoken to, speak every time you stand so you do not forget yourself. Do not forget yourself. Do not let one moment go by that doesn't remind you that your hearts beat thousands of times every single day and that there are enough gallons of blood to make every one of you oceans. Do not settle for letting these waves settle and for the dust to collect in your veins. This is for the celibate pedophile who keeps on struggling, for the poetry teachers, and for the people who go on vacations alone, for the sweat that drips off of Mick Jagger's singing lips, and for the shaking skirt on Tina Turner's shaking hips, for the heavens and for the hells through which Tina has lived. This is for the tired and for the dreamers, for those families that will never be like the cleavers with perfectly made dinners and sons like Wally and the beaver. This is for the bigots, for the sexists, for the killers, for the big house jail sentenced cats becoming redeemers, and for the springtime that somehow seems to know to show up after every one of our winters. This is for you. Make sure that by the time the fisherman returns, you are gone. Because just like the days I burn at both ends, and every time I write, Every time I open my eyes, I'm cutting out parts of myself just to give them to you. So shake the dust and take me with you when you do, for none of this has ever been for me. All that pushes and pulls and pushes and pulls, it pushes for you. So grab this world by its clothespins and shake it out again and again and jump on top and take it for a spin. And when you hop off, shake it again, for this is yours. Make my words worth something. Make this more than just another poem that I write, more than just another poem like just another night that sits heavy above every one of us. Walk into it, breathe it in, let it crash through the halls of your arms like the millions of years of millions of poets coursing like blood, pumping and pushing, making you live, shaking the dust so when the world knocks at your front door, clutch the knob tightly, but then open on up and run forward. Run forward as far and as fast as you must into its widespread greeting arms with your hands outstretched before you, fingertips trembling though they may be. Thank you very much.